I am particularly excited about this podcast today. Going to be talking with Brett McComas. He is the main dude behind Target Walleye. We're going to be talking to Brett about all kinds of stuff, particularly ice fishing. Let's get loaded. Brett, I've got so much to talk with you about. And first and foremost, I want to thank you. Uh, it was a few months ago. I can't even remember. Time flies by. I just had a birthday. I'm 44 years old now, and I'm telling you, uh, I remember old people telling me when I was young, uh, the older you get, the faster time goes by. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely, absolutely true. It's almost time is a completely different thing when you're older. Um I can't even get like, a, I, I don't, an hour, there's not enough time in an hour to get anything done. Whereas I remember in school, like an hour, this was like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, so, but you were uh, a few months ago, I can't remember exactly, like I said, but you were nice enough to promote another fishing show on the Target Walleye uh, email, and which is... It, it, if you guys have anybody that's watching this right now, hopefully it's just going to, this thing's going to catch on fire and it's going to have so many views. If you are not signed up for Target Walleye, you need to do it. It's super great. It's uh, new information that's just hitting the walleye world and it's funny and it's also ice fishing. What I particularly like about Target Walleye is it's kind of like no nonsense, just cutting through some of the bs you see in fishing a bit you know and 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 i understand you got sponsors and everything so it's a fine line there but i really like just how down to earth it is and it's uh it's really a it's refreshing so kudos you, to brett there so i but what i was saying initially is thank you for promoting another fishing show on there and and i was like gosh we why want we got an uptick of subscribers all of a sudden and then i got an email from a friend that said that that you had done that so so thank you Dude, absolutely no problem. I'm a uh, I'm the fanboy here. And I just for what I do for work, I'm constantly looking through social media and YouTube and whatever. And uh, the first time I ever came across you guys uh, that I remember was that Burbit video you did at Eel Pout Fest. Yeah, and I saw that, and it's like. Yeah, I, I get these guys. I click with them, and since then I've been the fanboy. So <laughs> I appreciate you having me on, man. You I, guys do an awesome job. I really appreciate that. Thanks. And uh, that, yeah, that's probably one of my favorites, maybe my favorite episodes that we've done. Um, and we're just trying to, you know, with another fishing show, it's about just getting down to the the uh, the core of what fishing is, you know. And I think most people can relate to and. And you don't, you're seeing it more and more with YouTube, you know, it's, it's a much more, um, I would say a different landscape. And I think for the better now, where you're seeing the more of the reality of fishing and, yeah. and getting to see characters and, and, but when we first had this idea, that wasn't, we didn't know that was going on at YouTube. So it's not like we're really doing anything original, you know, it's, it's kind of like everybody's doing that on YouTube and just it, the, the relatable, the real and Thanks. I just, we really try to, we're really trying to focus on characters and, and, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're going for there. But again, appreciate it. Let's talk about Target Walleye and you tell me what Target Walleye is. You're going to do it. You're going to do a better, um, <laughs> description of what Target Walleye really is. This is still the hardest question I probably ever get asked only because it's so hard to describe unless you get it. But basically, it's it's an email that we send out twice a week. Probably the only few emails you'll actually look forward to getting and opening. Absolutely. And, yes. Uh, main deal with it is it's everything that's happening in the walleye and ice fishing worlds like right now. Everything you see in that email is is stuff that's going on within the last say 24 hours or two days. It's almost like you flip on Sports Center and you see the top 10 plays of the week and and just the highlights of stuff that you missed because you can't see everything. So that's uh, that's sort of like Target Walleye where boom, it's everything that's going on. But like you guys, our thing is we keep it light because there's enough of the stale, dry, you know just stagnant stuff floating around out there and it all has yeah. its own time and place but keeping it light so that you laugh and learn at the same time and that's one reason i love what you guys do is it's the same you tell it how it is and yeah and it's entertainment uh, while learning right and and isn't it exciting and you're a younger man like i said i'm 44 man you I'm know 30. i 
one and I feel 44 for sure. Maybe. 50. <laughs> well, you're up, you're up there, you know, you're ice fishing, you know, you're up there more in a northern latitude than, than where I'm at a little bit, you know, I don't know, maybe you're two, three hours away. So that has a little bit, you know, uh, uh, it's harder on the body when you're at that, <laughs> yeah. right? That, Something that's like the that. Problem. Yeah. That cheeseburgers and beer. I mean, that. Even you combine it all. Oh and, uh, yeah, no, you you're listen. You're young still. You need to kind of see. I used to be addicted to uh, Taco Bell. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm hitting my 40s now, and I started to be like really kind of. Uh, not that I even have any heart problems, but I, you know, you get to a certain age, you're like, I could start having heart problems. So then I'm like, I, I get my my once in a while, my heart might just feel like a little weird. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, I might wanna. I don't know. It could be all clogged up in there. And anytime, you know, sense. well, any, yeah, anytime I go to Taco Bell, I'm like, am I really, you know, I kind of want to do as much as I can. And I didn't do this when I was young, man. I would, in my 20s, I would get giant pizzas. I'd eat the whole thing, like the stuffed crust <laughs> pizza hut, you know, I yeah. get the whole thing. And, and with a two liter of like root beer, you right. know, it's like, ah, I got my whole life. Then you get into like middle age where I'm at right now. It's like, wait a minute. I, uh. This this stuff could start compounding now, right. and my heart just could be f absolutely full of plaque. And so I need to probably stop going to Taco Bell. So one of the best things I've done for myself lately is not eat Taco Bell. So I don't know. That's It's, it's very difficult, though. You'd go out doing what you love, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I just, I don't know. I kind of like being on this planet. I like fishing. I want to try to do yeah. it as long as I can, so... Um, but what the hell were we talking about? So, target, oh, this is right. So what's exciting about Target Walleye is that, and just in general, this new media kind of just um, landscape we have now is that, and I would say like, you know, Jay Kumar with, with Bass Fan, he, he maybe was the first one to kind of see with the internet. It's like, wait a minute, we got this... We got this new thing going on here, and I really credit him, and, and Jay's behind Target Walleye, right? Yep. That yeah. dude is a genius. He's, uh, he's my mentor. That's where the whole idea for Target Walleye came. Like you said, he started Bass Fan, and when he sold that and and uh, then got back into the business, he created Bass Blaster, which is – Target Walleye is like the redheaded step cousin <laughs> – of Bass Blaster, right? <laughs> and I don't know if he had approached the Linders or the Linders approached him, but somehow the two teamed up and That's uh, a heck of a team, man. Created Target Wallet, and yeah, I, I Skype and chat with Jay several times a week or several times a day, and uh, man, I got to give that dude credit because he's I've learned every single time I talk to him, I learn something. Well, he's, you know, five years, I still learn something every time, and he's in <laughs> Washington State, right? New New Jersey. Oh, he's in New Jersey. Wasn't he? I, for whatever reason, I thought he was in Washington State. But okay, so he's in New Jersey. That makes a little bit of sense. I mean, I I used to live in Pennsylvania, and I was in a bass club in Pennsylvania, in the East yeah. Coast. I mean, it's it's big out out east, you know, bass fishing. But um, yeah, so I you know when he came out with Bass Fan, it had been what I always wanted to see in fishing, you know, and the whole idea of just like honest reporting. And like independent and like calling out stuff on like both and not worrying so much about sponsors, you know, like you, so like I said earlier, there's there's a balance there. You guys balance that really, really well. And people, especially now the Internet age, people, as I mean, as you know, people um, and I will censor this when I say this, don't worry, because, you know, this is might offend some people, but the, people want to cut through the bullshit. You know, I'll put a little I'll put a little bleep in there. See, I'm still kind of like if I was really, you know, trying to really buck the system, I wouldn't censor that at all. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm still going to censor myself. Walking that line, that finding that balance. I like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, you know, seeing this with with what you get, what you're doing at, at Target Wallet, because you're a one man band, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's some little worker elves and, and uh, I have a lot of guidance, but yeah, I'm the I'm the dude that start to finish writes them and sends them, and uh, 
I, it was a process to get to there. I started out helping him part time, five hours a week. Then it was ten, then twenty, then thirty, then forty, and then it was like, okay, something has to give. Working forty to fifty hours at my main job, which I had a cushy bank job. There you go. To do this, yeah. Uh, but something I had to give. Both were full time for yeah. about a year, which went longer than it should have. But I had a wedding to pay for, so that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but you put in your your time. You saw this is it like your you saw your time as an investment. Sorry, I'm. Right. It's Coors Light, my. <laughs> no, and the perfect. crazy thing is when you're talking fishing, it's like what other industry or career can you jump up at four in the morning and literally like go into it and be excited? Yeah. And that's, that was my biggest decision for leaving the bank. It's like I don't care if I get paid nothing, get paid a tenth of what I did. If I make more, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like this is what I live, eat, sleep, breathe. Yeah, and, so so working at a bank, how did you connect with these guys? Well, I live in Brainerd, Minnesota, and yeah. uh, everybody yeah, it's like here, an epicenter, even, ain't it? Yeah, even if they nobody, even if somebody doesn't fish, they fish several times a year here. It's just what we do, and uh, so working at the bank, you know, you got the the types that are the suits and stuffy old school whatever and i'm like the flannel bank dude who fishes and hunts the second the clock hits five o'clock and uh so i could relate a lot more to to common folk normal people like us and uh yeah i don't know but still i mean to try to look at numbers was just all i'd see is fish weights in my head and then my brain would start running around and now it's like okay i've been daydreaming for 25 minutes about whatever greenback yeah. As a Manitoba, like, I need yeah, to get back no, to I, I, I get it. So, did someone come, like, did did a lender come into the bank or something and say, or, or how did you get into? I mean, how did you go from banking to Target walleye? Uh, I'm a social media nerd uh -huh. too. I've always loved it. So, like, the social media fishing combine them, and it's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, so for like eight years, I just kind of part-time helped some smaller groups and pages on facebook posting and whatnot and uh before yeah i'm getting off track but that's all right man <laughs> add is welcome here yeah basically i was a social media nerd who fished a lot and had an instagram page and i i uh actually refused for like the first three years to get one because i didn't see the point at the time I, it was I, like I, it's basically facebook but i, I that's you know, such a great point. We'll we'll come back to that. I don't want to cut you off. But then uh, I finally got one because my buddy Travis Dewitt, a uh, guide up at Lake of the Woods, talked me into it. And I started posting on there, and I just got obsessed with it then and, like, how the difference was. There was no BS. It was just what you wanted to see at the time, what you wanted to see when you wanted to see it. And uh, I think Kumar and the Linders had been doing Target Walleye for – it maybe just started it a few months, um, and while they're looking for content to write about, like cool pictures to share or tips or whatever, uh, Jake kept stumbling across my Instagram page, um, and it was actually perfect timing because I had just gone on a couple of two week or week long trips up to Manitoba, catching these lime green walleyes that are like the size of Gary Coleman. Right on. And <laughs> on Lake Winnipeg, yeah. on Lake Winnipeg, yeah. they all greenbacks. Yep. That place can make anybody look good, yeah. and it, it did for me at that time, and he, he just kept stumbling over my pictures, and he reached out to me and just wanted to get on the phone and see what it was all about, and uh, yeah, I just started helping them basically start a Target Walleye Instagram page, and it was like five hours a week, and it slowly turned into uh, contributing content, gathering content, writing tips, and the hours just kept going up until, like I said, something had to give, and it was... Uh, I eventually it went from finding content to writing it to actually putting the email together with Jay's help. And, uh, yeah, all of a sudden it's like, boom, it's been four going on five years now, four years full time. So yeah, now you're full time doing yep. it just about four years. And, uh, I was helping them for about a year, year and a half part time before that. Gotcha. Year, year. Okay. Right on. So you had talked about how, when, when I first, um, started, so when we came up with the idea for another fishing show, we had really no clue about what was happening on, like, YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. And 
uh, we just knew that the internet with this, there's a lot of cool things going on with the internet. And so we were like, well, we need to do a show and just put it on the internet. But we didn't know really how to do it right, you know. But what I was amazed at is that it just seemed like there were so many, like you were saying earlier, like, why, why do we need an Instagram? Don't we have a Facebook? Can't Facebook? You can put pictures on Facebook if you just pictures if you want. You know, because right. that was at the time that was like Instagram where it's pictures, you know, it's yeah. and it just seemed like there could be some whittling down of like social media. Like, why do we need Twitter when you could share your thoughts on Facebook or, you know, but I kind of see it now. Like there's some people that just prefer Instagram or some people don't like Facebook. They'd rather do Instagram. And some people it seems like Twitter isn't very popular in in fishing, you know, right. but but. I, I, maybe as far as reading stuff goes, it's a beast. But yeah, it's like all these social media platforms. The companies keep changing them and tweaking them, and like people don't like change, and they change it too much, and then people jump to the next thing. And it's like when Instagram got super popular, it was I, probably because everybody's parents and family started getting on Facebook. You start seeing all the people chirping about politics. You get more and more ads. And it's just like you started seeing less of what you wanted to see and more of all this other stuff. And then it's like, boom, here's this shiny new Instagram thing where I only see people I follow. It's only pictures. I'm not getting ads. Uh, and obviously that's slowly changing. What has it been, six years since Facebook bought them? Right. And well, yeah. I mean, it, it... – <laughs> Yeah, it gets to be like you see it particularly with, with YouTube. YouTube's trying to be now like Facebook, and Facebook's trying to be like YouTube, you know? Algorithms, man. Well, they and they're – I mean, it's just like, <laughs> well, why do we need all these then if everybody's trying to be like – the? but, you know, it is what it is. Overall, I think it's, you know, it's really pretty exciting. Yeah. Just the fact – I keep on saying this. I mean, I, I've I've harped on this so many times, but – you know, coming from a more traditional like background of video production or just television produ production, it's really amazing that you can have um, you can put your own content out now and not and and, and grow an enormous audience and potentially and not have to pay airtime at all. Right. Like so there's no airtime. Like. And and where you know the the landscape that I came from, it's like okay, great, you, you've got um, a TV show idea. Well, if you're gonna have to, you're going to have to um, hire production staff, a camera guy, a, an editor. Oh, that's great. And that's expensive in itself. I mean, it can be very expensive. And then um, you're also going to have to buy, uh, buy airtime somewhere. Fox Sports, yep. Outdoor Channel, and that's ridiculously expensive. And here comes YouTube, and there are these young kids, like, you know, putting chesty videos up, like, and they don't even know, they're like, I, we just like putting chesty videos up of us fishing. And they, they amass just this huge catalog, and then, boom, YouTube really fires, it gets bought by Google, and it's like, those guys are, are I mean, they're like, uh, you know, John B., um, those guys are like the PewDiePie of, of fishing, which, <laughs> right. if you, you know, if anybody's watching this, don't know, don't know PewDiePie. PewDiePie's, like, got 15 million subs, maybe more than that, probably. I think he's got, like, 30 million subscribers on YouTube. He was one of the first YouTubers. Um, but those early adopters of oh, YouTube man. have really, I mean, with no... They didn't pay any airtime for anything. Nope. They're using the most basic of camera equipment. They've that's changed a little bit now. With I mean, yeah. they're just the fact that YouTube you can monetize the videos. I mean, when I found out about monetization, my jaw just dropped. I'm like, I don't even understand how how is YouTube even affording to pay all these people this much money? It makes it still to this day. I'm just. I'm floored by it. Just like you said, starting up TV, all these expenses, and you have to have the connections and all this, and it's like now anybody can put themselves out there. It's just a it's, whole new world. It's crazy. But I, I'll get. I want to get back to that. But first, kind of um, tell me how you got into fishing. Like, how did this become such a passion of yours? Man, that's a good question. Uh, my parents fished and took me fishing, but they weren't diehards. I mean, we would go out and throw slip bobbers at docks, whether it was May or September or July, whatever, and 
catch our bass and go home and clean them and eat them. And I'm embarrassed to say that, but everybody did. And that's uh, we blasphemous didn't... or sacrilege. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, we didn't live right by well so in minnesota there's lakes everywhere right so it's if you kind live, of excusable oh, though from you're from minnesota you're kind of yeah. allowed to do that to bass only right. in minnesota though. <laughs> sorry i go ahead i haven't eaten a bass in 20 20 some years so don't worry but no we just we live like 30 minutes from a lake so as a kid you can't get there and you always want to do what you can't do and we'd go a handful of times a year and uh, i just got obsessed with always wanting to go and there was this little river the platte river um in royalton minnesota was just down the road from my house and i biked there every single day and caught it must have been creek chubs at the time but i just got obsessed with it because like you'd catch these creek chubs and all of a sudden i catch like I thought it was a five pound small mall, so it was probably about two and a half. And I just got obsessed with like, why why did I catch that big one? There's all these little fish and all of a sudden I throw a silver minnow and catch a giant smallmouth and uh I don't know, I just got just nutty hooked on it, but I guess that's kind of me with anything I do. I I obsess over it and research it and whatever and uh yeah, I don't know. I just it wasn't long before I was running the boat for my parents, probably in elementary school and um, I don't know. I'm just you're you're bred born differently as a fisherman. It's just when you're obsessed with it like that. It's I dropped out of baseball, basketball, football at a young age and bought a five hundred dollar twelve or fourteen foot Lund with like a five horse motor on it because and I dropped out of sports because I didn't want to go in August September to football practice. Like oh yeah, I it's a great home time. Cops were biting. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm just always obsessed with it. But I actually think it was a good thing that my parents weren't super diehards. Um, it, for, it just made me want to keep learning more and doing more. And they didn't burn me out in a sense of uh, I've got buddies that got burnt out because their parents were super diehard fishermen and bring them out in November. Yeah. And they're old and miserable as a kid. Yeah. Trying to get musky. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Almost got burnt out as a youngin because he was musky fishing when there's ice on other lakes. Who who is this? This was Nick Linder. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about yeah. this the other day. Uh, his dad, James or Jim, yeah, you know, would bring him out as a kid musky fishing on the Mississippi or whatever in late November, and it's like, you know, maybe he's a kid. <laughs> he might not look forward to that the yeah. next time. But... I've been in the boat as a camera guy in those shoots. <laughs> Trust me, I, I I've I was getting burnt out. Oh, as a I camera get... guy, I need to say that as a camera guy, I was getting burnt out as a fisherman. <laughs> no, but like, man, so the fact that we would just go throw bobbers and even if fishing was bad, you catch a ton of bluegills or whatever. I just got obsessed with it because it was constant action. I, I, I totally uh, know where you're coming from. We have a similar story there, how uh, we got into fishing. My parents weren't into fishing either. Sure. It, it was it was Pete Wagner, you know, from another fishing show fame. Um, we, as, as best friends, you know, we, we got ourselves into fishing sure. and it was, and it was that, it was that Creek chub fishing, <laughs> you know, catching Creek chubs, man, I loved it. You know, catching little green sunfish in a, in a pond that was just full of, um, runoff from agricultural runoff and, it, it, it was just algae blooming. You'd have filamentous algae all over the place. I th- thought I'd throw out a fancy name there, um, but it was but it was full of green sunfish, and that was like it was heaven. It frankly yeah. was heaven. And I just and then I would uh, I would consume in fisherman magazines. I mean I couldn't. You know, and then the in fisherman specials, those hour long specials. I'm talking way back in the day. Um, you weren't even born. Which is, I'm just, I'm, I'm up there, you know. I'm touche, but I remember being in uh, fifth grade and sitting on the ice on a bucket, pretending to do a Linder show, even as a fifth grader who watching that stuff as a kid and like catching a hundred perch that are this big on wax worms and and talking like I'm a Linder yeah. while catching them and explaining what I'm doing. I mean, I guess you got to give credit to those guys too. Aside from my parents helping to get me into it, it's like if you can't go. You might as well watch it or read about it. Well, watching all those shows obviously had a big impact on my life. If you're yeah, yeah, there's old and pretending to be a host. So did you? Um, have, so you you've met all the Linders and and oh, uh, 
So I'm so envious of you. Yeah, it's I still get that weird feeling like goosebumpy cool. I go into the office about once a week, but I usually work out of my home office or traveling. Um, but I stop in Leonard Media once a week just to catch up with the crew. And uh, I've been lucky enough to fish with Al a handful of times in a couple tournaments. And, dude, that guy is a machine. He's 75 now. and he will... Al, Al looks great for 75, man way better shape than i am and he can go all day like we'll be out there snap jigging for walleyes and most people this is snap jigging to al it's like a hook set every single time <laughs> and i remember the first time i fished with him doing that pitching up in cabbage weeds i did it for like not even 45 minutes and my arm was cramped up and i was like sitting on the butt seat no longer leaning against it and it's like, we got to do this for 10 more hours? How is this man? He's got like Popeye arms. Well, it's amazing. And too, you know, it's been such, fishing has been such a huge part of his life, you know? And I mean, he goes full bore on all of it. I mean, what what um, Al and Ron created with In Fisherman is astounding. I mean, it's astounding what, the, what they created. And I'll be honest with you, I, I was saddened. Um, I don't blame them, but I was saddened when it sold because it's nowhere near what it used to be. But what they create with In Fisherman is just, it's remarkable. And the fact that Al is still, I mean, you know him better than I do, of course, still seems to be as passionate and oh, yeah. and and uh, just gives it his all. I mean, it's those guys... Those guys got me. They were they were really um, an important part of me getting hooked on fishing. Yeah. Like like it sounds, uh, they were for you as well. You with a lot of other people. Yeah, sure. that passion and like that craze. He absolutely still has it. I'll go into the office and the first thing he says, aside from it's always always a greeting with a handshake. How's it going? How are you and the family? And then. He's like jumping right into, so did you fish over the weekend? You know, where'd you go? What were they biting on? And it just, it's insane. I'll, or if we're out fishing and all of a sudden the bite turns off and uh, these fish that we were catching up shallow are gone or whatever, it'll be like two weeks later and he'll randomly be like, so I was thinking about it. And I wonder if that sun coming out and it getting calm actually pushed those fish up deeper in those weeds instead of off the edge where we thought. And, like, you're still thinking about that? that That's amazing. incredible. That's and really incredible, man. Passion. But, yeah, the, he never stops thinking about it and trying to learn and figure out what the next yeah. what the thing is you could do better. And it's and it's I. Incredible. I, I will say this: What a perfect example of, of of this. And I think my my opinion is, if you're going to start a business, your your number one, the number one ingredient that you should have is passion behind it. Absolutely. Now, if you can if you can have that passion behind it, um, obviously you need to know how to run a business. That's the second. Like you got to have a good business <laughs> mind. But that first one, man, passion. If you have passion, man, that's going to take you over the top if you've got the business acumen. And and Al and Ron had it. But first and foremost, and it proves it, just what you're saying, is he had that passion, man. And that yep. wasn't, I mean, that's why those guys just hit it out of the park, you know, oh, and continue to hit it out of the park. Not just doing the minimum to get by or meet requirements. It's like when you have that passion, you're just pushing constantly what's next like I mean, well, you, you saw it in the, you, you saw it in the television show you saw it in the magazine the magazine was a work of art man i i mean i met so many people in this industry and and i've not yet met the linders it's so crazy to me to think i've i work with people that work with them yeah. uh, do you know pete poloni by any chance it sounds familiar yeah but... he's um although he's he's working actually with stangy now um, okay, so, yeah. um, but so he's, I, I don't know if he's doing, um, any, any work with angling edge and, um, it's crazy because that's like three miles away from Linder media. Mm -hmm. Like everything is just in Brainerd here. It's, it's ridiculous. But how cool is that gotta be for like the, for like Al and Ron be like, yeah, we, we made that. We right. did that. I mean, that's our baby. I mean, we sold it, but that's our baby over there. It this is our new baby that. over here. <laughs> I mean, they're dom You know, they just dominate. You know, yeah. they're such they're such badasses. Um, but 
Uh, yeah, but in all my travels, I would ask people, is there anybody in the industry? Because I'm, I'm kind of a bit cantankerous like this sometimes. Um, I, I'd ask people, you know, is there anybody in this stream that's a real jerk? You know, and I and I got some names and everything, and I never I have only heard positives about Al. I mean, I've oh. never heard a negative thing about Al. What you see on camera is a hundred percent genuine. And obviously, that's not the case for everybody in every industry or right. every company. But he is just a genuinely good dude who actually cares. Yeah, and uh, it's not fake at all. It's unreal. And I've I waited when I first met him to find out if there'd be some fakeness somewhere, and there never ever was, and there just isn't any. We'll be on a fishing trip over in Ottertail County, and it's five in the morning, not much sleep, whatever, getting gas before we hit the lake, and uh, everywhere we go, I get to take some random person's picture with Al, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. And it'll be five in the morning, and... All he wants is a cup of coffee and a donut. He's a big donut guy. Yeah, really? Uh, and, like, that's – he needs that to start his day on this fishing trip and, like, random people want to take pictures with him. And he, every single time, is pumped about it. And that, like – you can't fake that at 5 in the morning, whatever, like 20 times in a row. You can't fake no, that. He it's... genuinely looks forward to meeting people and hearing yeah. their story, and it's just – Oh, it's it's it's, fa it's fantastic. I, I think the world of them. Yeah, I, I think the world. I got to tell you a little funny, um, little funny in fisherman story. Um, so, in college, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to college because I I, I had to. This is, I mean, this is late '90s. Okay, it was way way back. Um, and so I went to college because I knew that I, I wanted to be a, a professional bass fisherman. Okay. But I went, I went to college because I, I've heard, you know, you need to have a fallback plan in case, you know, that doesn't work out. So I went to college, I got a degree in broadcasting and everybody told me in college, like, you got to get an internship. You got to get an internship. So I'm like, well, I am going to try to intern with fishing companies, you know, um, doing television production with fishing companies, because I like, not only will I, you know, have experience in broadcasting television production from this, but I'll also get in my foot in the door with just fishing was my, exactly. you know, was my plan. So um, I think the first company, I, it was the first company I reached out to to try to get an internship was in Fisherman. Sure. And I kept on, I, I'd have a, a le now it's all email, but at the time I was, you know, you fill out a, well, maybe it's still like this, I don't know, but I, I did a cover letter. Yep. <laughs> and a resume, and I sent it off to In Fisherman, and I said I'd be ca I'll call you in a week to you know to touch base, you know. Yeah. So I would I sent that letter out, and um, a week later passed. I I called him um, trying to get a hold of Jim because Jim was sure. in charge of the television uh, side of things, you know. Uh, Jim is out. Uh, like to leave a message. Yeah, I. I I sent a letter. Um, we just want to talk with him about a possible internship. Man, I kept on calling week after week <laughs> after week. You know, I finally got a hold of, uh, of him, and this is my first kind of inclination of the realities of the business, television business, in particular. I got a hold out uh, of him, and I mean, I'm like, um, how old was I? Well, I, I don't know. I was 21 or something like that. I don't know how, and. I was nervous, man. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm talking to Jim Lindner right now. I've watched him, you know. And, dude, he was like, it sounded like he was so overworked. I mean, he was like, he sounded like he'd just been beaten. Like, I mean, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God. He's like, yeah, uh, yeah, this is Jim. I'm like, is this the Jim Lindner I see that on T? I didn't say that, but yeah. it, it was like, it was like, holy crap. And and it's like, well, he goes, he was like in the middle of just shooting a bunch of, you know, content, uh, you know, for the, for the show and everything. And, and he was nice, but it was my first kind of inclination of, of <laughs> what the grind of outdoor television production can be like. Right. And then I, you know, I, I got later, I got a job with, with Bass Pro Shops. And could kind of see how the real how the business works, you know. How it can be just it can be a grind, and it could be just a you know. But it was just so funny to really kind of get behind the curtain there a little bit, and and and, and to see the reality of like you know, um, 
I didn't get the internship, uh, obviously, but it, it was still it was still cool to be able to talk with Jim. But he was just <laughs> I'll just never forget how exhausted he sounded. Dude, that's so funny. One of my favorite sayings. And I don't even think it's a real saying. I think it's I might have made it up in my mind. But you work eighty hours a week to avoid working forty in yeah. the fishing industry. You yeah, know? right. <laughs> Absolutely. So how similar we are because. The story you just told me, I have basically the identical one. I won't rant for a long time, but like no, it's the- a podcast, man. You can rant. Um, I don't know how much, how long you have. How much time do we have with you? Dude, I got all day. Okay, I, well, have- I, I got. <laughs> unfortunately, I got this camera that can only uh, um, take one card at a time. Yeah, I only have sixty four. I'm gonna bore everybody. Speaking of boring everybody. I got a 64 gig card that I I got 45 minutes left of this, sure. so we got 45 minutes left of BS. Um, but this is good, man. I enjoy this. I'm I'm having a blast, dude. I, I you honestly said you sent a cover letter and a resume in. I literally did the exact same thing out from college. Didn't know what I was going to do. There was no such thing as a fishing degree, so I did marketing and sales. And I sent a cover letter. And I'd give anything to find it now um, to Linder Media. I found a, a secretary or like, you know, somebody who's basically between you and meeting your idol. Um, and I got an email address for I think it was Gary McNelly. I, I don't know exactly at the time who was the, the CEO or whatever. But I got their email address and in my cover letter. I remember specifically saying that I would scrub toilets, sweep whatever for a free internship and they did reply and they were like you know really appreciate it we don't have a position right now you know i mean super positive and cool to get a response yeah so i just story just clicked with me the second you said that i'm like we're the same yeah person man yeah it's and and what, what strikes me too is i have a shirt almost exactly like what you're wearing same color and everything so we might be <laughs> You know, more more and more scientists are believing that there are multiverses, and so right. we you might just be the you know I might be the parallel version of you in this parallel universe. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? I think so. Yes. <laughs> you want to go catch fish in the garage? Talk about fishing in the garage. How's yeah. that? Work? <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Let's go just talk fish in the garage. I'll show you all my stuff. Um, no, it's. And you know what's really interesting too is that there are there's so many other people like us, mm-hmm. and I I've saw that in particular um, growing up, I was addicted to um, later on. So at first I I was a multi species guy. You know I'd fish for I'm I'm that way now, but I got really into bass fishing, and like the Bass Masters was on an, on the Nashville Network every Sunday. The Nashville Network is now spike tv which is funny but it it the nashville network used to have this awesome outdoor block you know and i would i would get addicted to watching the bass masters this 30 minute show which you look at it now it's you know it's pretty unsophisticated i guess but (laughs) at the time i i would say actually the bob cobb who's a producer of it just did a fantastic job of storytelling it um but i became addicted to to uh to 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 bass fishing in particular because of that show yep. and um and i can't even remember why i went on this tangent necessarily of talking about bass masters but oh this is it um it's the fact that i've run into so many other people that had that same experience that that show got them into bass fishing you know yep. got them just tweaked out you know like um mark zona I talked to yep. Mark about it and and uh, and so many others. You know, it's like no one's really original. You know, we're all <laughs> there's so many <laughs> there's so many people like us, so many, you know, but right. at the same time it's actually very cool too that you you have this there's a commonality or um you know that like a thread that runs through so many fishermen, you know. Yep, exactly. Or a brotherhood and a sisterhood, you know. And it, that's the other thing too. It's cool that there's more women, you know. Absolutely. Do you do you one thing I noticed that I think is is really interesting. So in school, I grew up. I had a kind of a weird upbringing. I was born or was born in Minnesota, but my parents got divorced, and so my dad had custody of me in mm-hmm. the summertime, and then uh, every other Christmas. So, but my mom, we lived in California, so I lived like this California existence, 
yeah. then I'd come back to to summers in Minnesota, and and I absolutely um, I love I, that's why I moved back. I love Minnesota. Minnesota is where I've always felt like it's home. But living in California, dude, I was like, I kind of you know, as growing up, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't. I mean, I I would say I fish. I I would wouldn't deny it and i you know i was in a fishing club and everything but it certainly wasn't a cool thing to do you know (laughs) and it it's it so seems like now fishing is pretty cool for young people fishing is cool can you imagine the high school fishing team as a kid oh my goodness smokes i mean look at like even like these young youtubers you know and i did a um I did a. I, I worked with Alex Perrick a little bit. Um, I done I done a collab with um, with Northwoods Angling. Yeah. And Alex Perrick. We were doing a, a, a Stur- Saint Croix sturgeon deal, yep. and so I got to meet Alex. Super nice kid, but he had brought um, a woman with him that he had very attractive. Actually, I believe was it. No, no. So it was one woman he had met on Instagram. Very attractive <laughs> girl. You know, and I'm like, dude, I was like, this, this didn't exist where it's like, oh, there's this idea of like attractive women who are fishing uh, and on and you could, you know, you could meet up with them and, and she go on fishing. Because tr- you fish. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> and, she, and essentially it was like, I don't know this to be the case, but I, I guess it's, it's like, there's, there's almost like fishing groupies now. Right. You know, like for these young kids, I'm like floored by it because me grow, growing up, it was like, no, I, you know, I, I remember in high school, I had to dress, I had to dress up kind of like California, you know, because I mean, I, you know, it wasn't like, I kind of feel like an idiot doing it. I should have, should have just, you know, wore fishing stuff, but I was <laughs> yeah. like in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get beat up. Right. Show up wearing flannel and a. A trucker cap. I don't know what people in California wear. Tank tops. I don't know anymore. Yeah, tank tops. This so and everything, even in in business meetings. <laughs> yeah, Troy Linder does. I think. I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> but do you find that too? With with you know, it's just a completely different thing going on with fishing, and, and I, it's it's great. I don't. It, yeah, that's mind blowing. You never went to school and talked about fishing, yeah. and uh, I worked at a bait shop all through high school, uh, Christopherson's Bait Shop in Alexandria for. Yeah. I actually worked there for like eight years. That was a similar thing from the time I was 13 until he finally hired me when I was almost 16. I went there every single day, and he finally was like, okay, if you're just going to be here, I'm going to pay you and make you do something. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we had a core group of buddies that worked at the bait shop that were psycho about fishing, and that was who we could talk about it with, but, like, you didn't go to right. school and brag about it or, like, yeah. nobody cared if you got – seventh place on the Lahamadu chain with a couple two pounders. Like no, now it's there's a hundred and like forty kids in the Brainerd High School team. That's it's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool, man. It's definitely um a change that's that's happened, you know. And it's yep. really cool to see it. I think too, just when you think of how like amazing lures are nowadays too. Mm-hmm. And, like, like there are amazing new genres of lures the detail it's like if you come to the market with a lure that isn't that doesn't look fantastic that doesn't have detail that doesn't have the sharpest hooks it's like dude get out of here even if it catches fish which is kind of sad but it's like yeah everything's so cool now and not just lures and and whatever electronics it's dude imagine where things are going to be even in five years i mean i know it's it's pretty fantastic if someone told you Garmin Panoptics live scope was a thing. You'd be like, get out of here! Like, I can see fish two hundred feet away and know where it is, and tell my buddy to go drill a hole over there. I know, (laughs) that's amazing, right? I remember when downscan technology came out. I'm like, dude, it's an ultrasound of the bottom, right? I couldn't believe it, you know. And now, yeah, it's with live scope, it's incredible. I just had a buddy on uh, Upper Red Lake ice fishing. Well, it's probably been a couple weeks now. Uh, but he's got the original pan optics unit with that, that like down scan where you can see 30 feet to the sides. And he said it is so frustrating how many fish never come into where your cone would be on a flasher. 
that you can see them 20 feet off to the side and they come and hit the brakes and turn around. He said it's like the most frustrating thing in the world, but it's cool to help dial in baits because he'll find out that like maybe they didn't want rattles or whatever. And they're literally spooking and not committing three times farther outside yep. of what you would ever see on a flasher. Yep. It does my own stuff. I think that's probably run across my mind a few times if that was happening. What do you think is spooking them? Do you think somehow it's that cone or it's the light from the hole or? Yeah, I don't know. There's so many uh, hypotheses. <laughs> hypotheses. Yeah. Uh, I've been the, the pervert whose stuff's slush in my hole so light doesn't go down and i don't know i i've been fishing where buddies you gotta be careful how you said that i'm the pervert who stuffs slush in my hole Uh, you heard it here that's i'm gonna quote you on that that's how we're gonna title this podcast (laughs) you can edit this and make me look like whatever type of person you want me to now (laughs) you heard it you heard it folks i got permission i've been fishing with buddies who uh make me shut off the unit so that they think the ping isn't hitting a fish right in the head in five feet of water and who knows man i mean at the end of the day they're just fish but obviously they're way they're, more complex yeah they they're, are they are it's 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 really fascinating what are your um i i want to talk specifically about target walleye and what's ha- happening on target walleye right now but um for for ice fishing, what are you seeing as some of the big breakthroughs or, or um, I guess that, you know, t- trending things going on or s- stuff that's really kind of taking ice fishing by storm? Or well, It's almost crazy that there's so many new things and new trends happening that it's it's hard to almost pinpoint a couple to talk about. But a few of them, and they're so different in their own way, is, is one, the technology like we touched on. That's the, the biggest, craziest thing in my mind, just as far as it goes for for f- actually finding fish and breaking down new water. That's, that's insane. But then the whole mobility and moving and f- to stay on fish and not just setting up shop and, and sitting on a bucket and waiting for them to come through for that 20 minute window at dark. Now people are actually realizing like, you know, if I, if I'm not catching fish, not marking fish, they're somewhere and they're biting somewhere. So to see the whole mobility just explode is cool. But also this is exact opposite of that point. You see the, the hard houses and the permanence, dude, that's, that's a whole nother thing. And it's the exact opposite of, what I'm talking about, search and move and breaking down water, but bringing fish to you and techniques for calling in fish for, they've got rattle reels that will automatically jig a bait. I saw your last, one of your last videos, the guillotine. How sick is that technology? Dude, I think that thing's super sick, man. It's super cool. To have I, that I, I, until I saw that thing like quivering down on the drop, I was like, now wait a minute. I got to look at this thing a little bit more in detail here. I'm super pumped you did the really tight, sh- like tight shot to show the shimmy, because you wouldn't see that unless you were right there. Yeah. And that's like they said, you can't duplicate that. But I guess that just goes into technology, I guess, and and how no matter how you fish and your style, dude, it's just always changing, and you're always getting a, a one up and an advantage. But man, the the permanent house category. Now that I have a kid, which it's still so weird to say, I have a daughter. It's great, uh, man. <laughs> you, you, you seeing your social media, uh, you, you're a great dad, man. And oh, I, 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 I said this to, um, and I hate to say these things because I, I don't mean to sound like a name dropper or anything, but I think it's important because these guys are my friends and I think a lot of them. But Chase, Chase Parsons, who's a um, yep. professional walleye angler, I talked to him at the St. Paul Ice Show and I see pictures that he puts up with his kids, and yep. and I talked I talked to him, and I said, "Dude, you're a great dad, man." And I saw I've seen it with Gary, with with Gary, yep. how Gary is with Chase and and his daughter Aubrey. Gary is a fantastic father, and he's passed that along to Chase. Yep. And Chase is with his sons, and seeing seeing well, they're up on stage at weigh in, and and yeah, yeah. holding the fish for him, and it's really I, kudos to you, man, because there's no there's no more important job than that. There's I completely no agree, and I appreciate that. Out. And that's why I want to buy a permanent fish house now, because she's 16 months old, and now at the age where she can run and learning some words, and it's like, I cannot wait to get you fishing. But I, 
don't think I can bring a 24 pound kid ice fishing other than if I were to get a permanent fish house and now it's doable. Like right. we could be watching Doc McStuffins making a pizza and still fishing and it's 75 degrees and cuddle up in a pile of blankets. Like, and those are, it's yeah. And those are memories too, that she'll just, she'll have with her the rest of her life too. You know, and she gets to a certain age where she can remember those things, but those are huge memories. Huge. I think memories. I need to <laughs> What's that? I think I need to buy one. Yeah. Like, I can't until she she's at the age where she can fish and stuff but she's still we uh we said before we had a kid like we're still gonna live our life and do our things and a kid will be with us and part of that experience and absolutely dude summer, there's these people that are putting their life on hold like, I, dude you're gonna you're gonna give your kid a obviously that you know my wife and i have talked about it um we don't have any children not for lack of trying but um <laughs> But it's like you don't, you know, you 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 should live your life and 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 yep. your marriage needs to be as uh, I think a priority as much as raising a kid. Like I see some people yep. that and their marriage falters because of that. They're putting so you know, um, yep. but I think living your life with your child, doing things that really excite you, and that to me is you're 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 being a better role model. You know, absolutely. You're, you're, you know. Uh, she, uh, we strap on the, I don't even know what you call it, a little baby carrier. Yeah, yeah Alan from the Hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're hiking along Mississippi. We've had the pack and play in the boat. I got an eighteen foot Lund tiller and uh, put a big pack and play right in the middle, so she's not old enough to fish yet. But man, she loved hanging out in that with the umbrella. And anytime she got fussy, if we just went about seven miles per hour, her favorite thing in the world is her hair moving in the wind. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's great, man. That's got to be really cool to see those little time. things come out too. It's like, oh, she likes the wind through her hair, <laughs> you know? And that's, yeah, just the personality shining through now at that that's age. Like awesome. I can walk past and just swing a notebook right. and the wind hits her and she's like, <laughs> that's it. It's like a fashion model. Right. You gotta be taking pictures. I'm so glad she got her mama's looks and not mine. <laughs> that would, I would have felt real bad for. That's her. what we do as men, you know. Or, or our whole mission in life, in many respects, is just to outpun our coverage. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've done it myself. I, it's just like people are like, "What is she doing with you?" I'm like, "I don't know. Well, I don't I mean, know." But it's fantastic. Don't tell her. Yeah, don't tell her. <laughs> um, when you talked about like. Um, uh, you know mobility and i i did a, a shoot i actually did a lot of shoots um with uh, dave gens yeah and and dave um i i used to film for ice team um yeah. and dave he would be he would he wouldn't spend more than five minutes on a spot uh, on a hole if there wasn't anything going on yeah. he's and, still yeah i don't know how old he is but he has not slowed down he's like reverse aging if you yeah. see him yeah but yeah, he's on that snowmobile with an underwater camera rigged on it, a flasher rigged on it, auger axe, everything. And it's like that dude can pull up and not even get off his sled, flip a, a underwater camera and a Vexilar down the hole. And if he doesn't have anything, they flip right up in the pouch and 40 miles per hour, he goes that way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I kind of think I've kind of uh, for my ice fishing, with a few exceptions, I, for pan fishing, I... I, I I kind of do that. I kind of like, okay, I'm going to give this five minutes. And if I'm not, if they're not coming in, even after, you know, jigging and trying to get some attention, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to move to another spot. So I've kind of lived by that. It's different. I, I, I like to actually channel catfish uh, through yep. the ice and the horseshoe chain of lakes. Yep. Um, and that's a little di different situation, sort of how I fish for them. But because all of a sudden there's like a, certain time it's just it's almost like clockwork in this one area it's like when the yep. sun goes it's just like they just boom they're there they're like crappies on that lake it's so weird i i've only did it once back in the day and we were crappie fishing and they just came through suspended like 10 feet off bottom and we're eating little tungsten yeah like is this really how you catch catfish through the ice or was that just an accident i don't know they'll come through at all kinds of weird uh you know like i, I i'll fish them I'll fish them in like 35 feet of water. This area is kind of where I fish them. You know, one of my uh, one of my key areas, uh, which is ridiculous to say that. <laughs> um, 
but they they I notice they kind of come in all different areas of the water column sometimes, and sometimes it's more I guess more commonly right in the middle of the column. They'll, the water yeah. column will come in, you know. But I've also caught them in seven feet of water, and they're just, you know. Um, I don't think they're normal catfish. That well, like that chain is special. That's... Yeah, it really is, and and I'm convinced if more people utilize the, the the those catfish from there, there would be bigger ones in there because they're yeah. they're kind of stunted. Um, yeah, I see that. Yeah, they're kind of stunted, but. Um, Going back to the wheelhouse conversation, the, the permanents, um, I see those as just like it's such a great like a like your headquarters, you know, like your base camp, dude. You know, your, your base camp exactly. And then yeah. if you get like a, a um, one with a, what do they call it, like a toy hauler? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's the deal where you got your your ATV or your snowmobile come down in. Right. I mean, it's. It, that to me is such an that's idea. Such a dream, man. It really it, is. But it, it's like you can use it as a camper all summer long. They're not just fish houses now. I mean, stoves, freaking backsplashes, whatever you want. But yeah, if you can use it year round, helps to justify it. And then for somebody who travels, like one hotel room for a weekend is like three months of a fish house payment. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So. um Target walleye, you're always on the cutting edge of what's going on in ice fishing, walleye fishing. It's so um, timely, you know. That's the other thing. So you do you do about two emails. Just tell me your routine um, about getting. Yeah. So you do two emails a week, correct? Yep, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, and uh, literally, I'm working on them until I hit send that afternoon, about three o'clock or so. Uh, so stuff you might have something come across in the news or like something big happens in the industry or whatever and it was posted like 15 minutes before you get that email but it's in this email because uh yeah wednesdays and fridays i don't look up <laughs> wednesday so wednesday like when are you doing the bulk of the work on it because you're you're constantly uh, right. checking social media checking the internet um so how are how are you how how do you um, organize a week to be able to get done what you need to get done for for that newsletter? Well, it's tough because my weeks are always changing. But I guess the short answer is I'm always looking at social media and everywhere. Uh, I I'm obsessed with it. I can't turn it off. But then for work too. So what I'll do is I'll have like a Google Doc, and if I come across something, no matter where I'm at. Uh, whether it's an idea or a link or a photo or whatever, I copy the link and set it aside in the Google Doc. Um, even if I'm not working at the time, you know, just put it all aside. And then, yeah, Wednesdays and Fridays are when I really, like, before it's light out until it's dark, just jam on those emails nonstop. But, yeah, it's it's two days ahead of time of of reaching out to people, whether it's putting together a tip for the website or, or meeting – whatever tony roach or hawthorne on uh Mille Lacs lake and shooting a couple videos to go on the email uh so that's kind of what i use the the couple days prior to when an email comes out is it's either reaching out to people going somewhere and filming something or just searching for contacts or content and reaching out to people what to you has been the biggest stories in walleye fishing and ice fishing uh this this year i know that's a that's a maybe a difficult question it's been it's been a lot going on but kind of what kind of stands out to you like 2019 for me walleye fishing i still think it's the uh catch record release format stuff i i think you're gonna see a lot more of that and i would personally love to see the trend of people using artificials it's just every year it's multiplying this year even more so and i would love to see that continue and if you could have walleye tournaments where you can't use live bait i think the industry in a whole would just explode with with sales with marketing with you know just the whole cool factor fun factor aside from a plain hook and a fathead to hey i'm using a, a quarter ounce vmc moon eye jig and a, a straight impulse smelt minnow because it falls faster and doesn't catch as much water and it's triggering the bites and you know it's just it's a whole new world and it works and uh more and more people are 
are catching on. And uh, I think that's the biggest trend um, and probably my favorite for sure. Do you think walleyes are different than bass when it comes to eating artificials? I think they, or is it just a cultural thing? I think it's I think it's more so cultural. I I do think that they're a little bit fussier and pickier in that if something's not moving very fast, it gives them I don't know if they've got heightened senses, if they're superior to a bass and that they know like that's not real. Uh and I'm just going to say they are, but the whole reaction bite thing for walleyes, that's where it really yeah, I think it's a whole new level there. Uh, if you're fishing slow, whether it's ice fishing or open water, um, if you're fishing slow and giving them time to analyze it, look it, look at it, feel it, taste it, whatever, it, you're probably not going to do that well all the time with artificials. But if it's something where you're making them bite and that bait is moving, uh, it's a whole new world. And I, yeah, I mean, that is different for bass because it's like there's times you're throwing unweighted wacky worms and the slower it falls the better and it's like they'll sit there and look at it until they slurp it up and a walleye would just be like get out of here with that licorice stick right right so i don't know i i guess that's the one difference i've noticed most is those baits have got to be moving and making them bite versus soaking yeah i i've what what it's interesting that you see you say that walleyes are triggerable the bass are highly triggerable Sounds like you're saying walleyes are as well. Yep. And I've always said that one of Van Dam, like Van Dam, Kevin Van Dam had a tough year this year, but like one of the keys to Van Dam's success uh, in bass fishing is that he just knows how to trigger fish very well, tr- trigger yep. bass very well. And I've thought that about, about walleye fishing, particularly when you, when trolling is such a huge aspect, you know, in tournaments, um, where, you know, you're pulling crankbaits, and it's just like they're just they're just one action. They're yeah. not even. There's no, you know, there's no like. There's it's just that constant. Da, 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 you know, yep, and where, hour past their phase. Yeah, where is if you had the ability to trigger? And I know that guys will do S turns and they'll they'll kind of mess with, but it's hardly much of a real big trigger like snap jigging would be where. The harder you, uh, the aggressively erratic, you know, that action is, the more chance that I, I believe, I see it in bass fishing, I've seen it firsthand in bass fishing, the more erratic you make that lure, particularly yeah. with soft jerk baits. Um, I've seen it like where if you didn't work it fast enough, you would never catch a fish. But if you just went, gah, gah, bah, gah, I mean, it's hard and weird and erratic, and then all of a sudden they'd be like cats. They'd come yeah. out of the woodwork, you know, like yeah. you never know that they're there. Then all of a sudden they come out of the trees. You know, because of how hard you're working. So it's right. interesting to see, you know, that that's, that's – walleyes aren't any different. Right. You look at the whole jig and wrap, shiver minnow, whatever hard body glide bait or jig and bait you use, those things are like cheating. It, it's July. It's 90 degrees. It's glass calm, not a cloud in the sky at noon. And you can have a fish eat a little chunk of lead that's about three inches long. But you're doing four or five foot snaps, and that bait is right past them, flipping upside down as it drops, and they just jump on it. I don't know. It's And it goes against, you know, walleyes, too, being like, ah, oh, they're lazy. They don't fight hard. Man, I, I, I fished a lake <laughs> here this summer um, where, I mean, I was floored at how hard these walleyes were fighting. Right and 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 it was like it was early summer, but I was like, what in the? I mean, <laughs> dude, walleyes can. I mean, they get a reputation of, of being a like fighting a wet sock, is what bass guys like to say or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once they hit a certain size, there's not much like those big head shakes and runs and. Uh, but yeah, obviously they got to hit a certain size. Right, right. Not like you can catch a 13 inch bass. And the thing goes freaking nuts. Right, 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 right. Fine. The little walleye just does kind of come in like a drift sock, shake yeah. a little bit. And yeah. So once they're the right size, man, that's <laughs> yeah, it's on, man. Oh, it's awesome. Was at the St. Paul Ice Fishing Show not that long ago, and what's so funny is I I I pulled up. I was getting close, right to the river center, getting ready to park, and here you come. You walked right in front of me, and I go, "That's Brett McComas right there." 
<laughs> you should yeah. have messed with me for sure. But I didn't. Well, I didn't want to because I was driving a chick car. I drive a Hyundai Elantra <laughs> that my mom was kind enough to gift my wife and I. Yeah. Uh, um. Because she couldn't drive it anymore, so I, yeah, so I that's like my I have a truck too, but actually yeah. I don't really have a truck right now. I tried to start it this morning, and it's just like it's not starting. But it's a '95 Silverado pickup truck yeah. that I can't get rid of. I've, I've got like this real relationship, not in a weird way. Um, I, I really love this truck, and so I have this old truck, and it's not starting. So I'm driving around a Hyundai Elantra. I'm like, I can't. Uh, Brett can't know that I'm driving up. Hyundai Dude, Elantra, I, want so I, to, I want to judge you because I probably just got done parking my truck, which it's not like one of the big ridiculous ones, but it's got a four inch lift uh, and nothing in the cities is made for that. I did a 15 point Austin Powers turn to get in a parking spot. And if I would have seen your car, I probably would have been jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I doubt that, but thanks for saying that. Um, <laughs> so what did you, what did you think of the St. Paul ice show? Ice and winter sports show. Is that the tech? Yeah, the name is like this long, but everybody calls it the St. Paul Ice Show. Uh, it's always a blur. It goes by so fast because there's so many people you want to see and talk to and things you want to get to. And it all of a sudden is just like, boom. Uh, but yeah, crazy busy year. Lots of cool new stuff. It's hard to say what, you know, everybody wants to know what's the coolest thing you saw at the show or whatever. And uh, it's always hard for me to come up with that because... There's lots of cool stuff, but I'm a sucker for all the like little gadgets and stuff that it's like, why didn't I think of that? Not even gadgets. Uh, things like a dude develops a, a seat top to go on a 20 pound propane tank where it's like, oh, you know, why yeah. didn't I think of that? Now, instead of having the propane tank outside for room, it's it's inside the fish house and I can sit on it or whatever. Like little yeah. weird things like that yeah. come out of woodworks at the St. Paul show. And that's. That's almost my favorite part of it, I think, is aside from just networking and seeing basically everybody in the ice industry is in one area this big, which is mind blowing. And uh, that's what makes it fly by. But seeing all those little doodads and it's like, dude, I should have thought of that. I should have invented that. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And I'm amazed just how big it is. Like I, I only was able to get to one floor, you know, yeah. I did like I did shot four videos Um but I only shot them on that first floor, that main floor, and it's like there's all this, all these other areas too. So like, oh. I'm just gonna have to really hunker down next year and just, well, I got a mission. But I, it's kind of cool. I get stopped by some friends and everything that yeah. I've worked with, and so that's cool. Yeah. But I saw that you had a picture with, um, I think it was Sam Sam Sobe, yep. and, and Murray. What's Murray's last name? Was uh, Murray. It was Murray. He, in the... Hebert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, it goes by Fish and More now. So yeah, yeah. So I, I've I've met Sam before, and um, and it and also um, uh, Uncut Angling, um, Aaron. Uh, yeah, w w it was in the pictures. It's yep. it's it's fascinating to me, and and I've had a conversation recently um, about this. Like um, Murray's young, Sam's young. You look at their their social media. And it's it makes me kind of think that I'm just an old fart. Like it's like past my, you know, like I, I'm just gonna keep doing it, you know. But but I'm like these guys are just exploding. Yeah. And and, and like Murray, I remember like Murray, um, he he did a comment. I was doing a live stream like I think it was last year or something, and just with fishing, you know. And and Murray yeah. was watching my live stream and and uh, and. He said something about how another fishing show was like his favorite um, YouTube channel. I thought to myself, it's so funny. Here's this young, <laughs> young lad who's just, he's, you can just tell how much he, he loves fishing, which is super cool. But I really kind of like got this feel. It's so funny. It was like, oh man, Murray thinks. He, he, I was like, oh my God, you know? Maybe I'm not too old. Maybe yeah, no, old. well, yeah, maybe I'm not too old. But like, I, it was so funny. It's like, oh, I, I was. It's, it's almost like the, it was reversed. I'm looking up yeah. to like this young man's. You know, uh, he he thinks highly of what we're doing, and he's got this successful YouTube channel, and so that was. I thought that was kind of funny. But what do you think is you know turning to YouTube? What um, what do you think is going on with that platform? Like, how could you describe? Um, how some of these channels blow up and i think yeah. consistency is a is a big part of it but i think there's something more to it i was just curious what what your opinions are on that 
do I this is something that I talk about with my buddies all the time because it's just mind blowing. But I don't know that consistency is the number one factor. Then finding that niche, I think, is uh, I mean, you look at uh, like let's say Guggen Squad stuff. It all of a sudden now it might not all be fishing videos. You know, you see a guy like Flair, and it's like I bought this cool machine for my ranch or uh i got a new pet this or that and it's like these guys find these niches and when all of a sudden one of these videos gets twice as many views as the last one you look back and see what you did differently whether it was the thumbnail the caption the description the content obviously and it's like okay every time i post a video with this type of difference it does better so i'm going to do more of that and just constantly tweaking and finding that niche of content uh but consistency is is the number one you need to have the consistency before you have that i guess unless you're in weeb you could post once every four months and everybody would still watch it because you're yeah the later jersey fish crushing machine right just out there but yeah. out there like a really good way yeah <laughs> yeah I, and i i kind of you know i'm really hard-headed because um i've just i've kind of been like i just want to do content that i just want to put out there as far and not not that right. i i don't care what people want to watch i do but i'm really it's like I, I probably don't focus enough on what's trending or because I kind of I don't want this to be too much like a job where I'm like, oh, I got to look at what's, you know, I got to look at what's trending. And then, uh, God, that really doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun, but I'm going to have to do it so I can have a video out. Whereas right. and, and I think that's probably that might be the problem with what <laughs> with what how, what how we've we've just grown really slow. But. But I, you know, consistency and just a long term, just sticking with it. And yeah. honestly, for us, it's got to be something enjoyable, or or we're not going to do it. And I, I'm looking more at like kind of the Patreon, like you know, um, a, a fan funding kind of model, um, more than anything, for a number of reasons. I mean, I, I. I like the idea. I like the idea of not. It'd be interesting what you think about this, but I'm. I I like the idea of not necessarily having sponsors, and this is way putting the cart before the horse. But I, I like to just, you know, be the idea of having the people that watch or like what you're doing um, fund what you're doing. And then you can be completely honest, and if if there's a product that comes out. You can say whether it's crap or whether it's great. I mean, just completely. So I think, and I'll kind of explain a little bit with what we're doing with Angling Uploaded. I I saw one of the things that bothered me with another fishing show, because we didn't really, when we first started it, we didn't really know about the landscape of social media. We just knew the internet and we wanted to put something out there. But you know. another fishing show is, it's not, so much as as you know it's not so much about teaching it's mm. you know where you can glean some stuff from it but yep. it's it's more about stories and characters and things going wrong relatable you know yep. and what's bad about that though is there's a lot of people that want to learn you know and they go to youtube to learn and and so i wanted to do uh, um some things that where someone could get more uh, learn from, but at the same time, we still have another fishing show, but we also have these other content yep. items completely separate yep. from another fishing show so people can get... So the idea for angling uploaded, and, you know, I, I think I, I, I just, I had to go this route because, frankly, another fishing show in its the way we had set it up, I, for me, it, I, it, I felt like it had run its course. And I wanted to go have this, you could look at it as like this umbrella, like a network, like an ABC, NBC, CBS, where you have different content items. You know, we have another fishing show, but we also have um, yep. something about that's more technical about bass fishing or, you know. So that's the idea. That's why 
I went that route. People think that Pete and I have divorced or we're in or we're it's more like a separation right now because sure. he is he is absolutely not it's not a separation he's just busy with a grocery store business where he he lost his butcher and he lost his manager and it's a holiday so yeah so that's why pete's been mia but um but that's the idea behind angling uploaded and i also wanted it and this is why i appreciate so much what you're doing it's just said no it's like you know you you you're a straight shooter and it's just people i i want people to feel like when they come there um it's just going to be very real it's not going to be and, and most of youtube is like that yep. but um i just felt in this this is something now knowing more of the landscape of the internet and how things work you yep. this is kind of the direction we need to go i could be completely wrong but even these podcasts just doing these podcasts like this um it's something that i really enjoy doing and so given a mix of you know podcasts and fishing and then another fishing show i want to get another fishing show i want to get to a point where we can put up another fishing show episode every month so yeah but that's i, I went off on a long tangent i apologize <laughs> no, I love it. I think it's a good idea. And uh, one of the things that we've kind of hinted at, but I don't know if we straight up said it, is uh, YouTube is like reality TV nowadays. So being yourself and genuine, I think, is super important, along with being consistent and finding like your niche or whatever your your thing is. But the whole uh, it's like people just want to know what you're doing and what you're doing next and what you're doing right now. I think it's, you know, back in the day, people watched Real World or, you know, oh, reality yeah. like that. I was addicted uh, to that show. Yeah. No, because you and why? I mean, it's just people living their life. I know. I don't know. And that's what YouTube. I mean, unless you're doing like the specific how to stuff, like the fishing vlog stuff that blew up. Yeah. You just get addicted to wanting to know what they're doing next because you I don't know. It lets you <laughs> let your personality shine through. It is a strange phenomenon how in some ways I'm like, I, it, it worries me because I'm like, don't people have anything better to do than watch guys fishing with chesty videos, GoPro, ch you know, there's a part of, but there's other time, the other sense, I mean, I'm really excited about it, you know, and I think it's a positive, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really fascinating to me. Yeah, no, as I think, uh, whatever the case, as long as more people are getting into the sport and uh, promoting it and helping each other grow and just helping people learn. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's all positive stuff. It's all so different in its own way, but it's all positive. So 2020, man, we're living in the future. Tell me what you're looking forward to. Any advancements that you're seeing coming along the horizon? What, what's, what are you looking forward to in 2020? I can't give up any, uh, any nuggets on advancements or I'd probably get, in trouble uh oh awesome well, I, like to, I, I got a few things too coming down the pike i've heard i can't talk about you just read the target walleye emails and you'll stay tuned to that but no i'm just looking forward to it and uh continuing to grow as a person as a target walleye platform what we do and uh i don't know i want to get my kid to catch a fish maybe she'll be old enough by the end of this year and i want to catch myself a uh a teener burbot I've never caught one that was in the teens, wow. 13 or bigger, uh, which now I feel like I'm talking about resolutions and not. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> but, yeah, well, I, I really appreciate uh, you talking with me, and uh, thanks again um, for all you've done for, for promoting. Thanks for being a, a fan of what we're doing here. If you've not checked out Target Walleye, you got to sign up for their – how do they sign up for their your emails, Brett? Uh, we're over 160,000 people now. Is that what you said? Sorry. No, no, no. How do people? Well, that's impressive. Very impressive. Oh, but how, how do people do sign up? You're I think of the power you think of the power you have, Brett. Just <laughs> boom, one hundred sixty thousand people. Like that's not what you asked me, but I'm just gonna yell it out. Uh, no, you just go to targetwalleye.com and click sign up free, and you punch your email address in and hit enter, and you're not gonna get a bunch of mortgage rate, you know, junk mail coming your way. We don't sell the email addresses or anything like that. It's literally just 
two emails a week packed with everything that's going on in the walleye and ice fishing industry man it's a quick fun read that's awesome. it awesome dudes thanks okay. so much for talking with me check them out target wall i sign up and if you like what we're doing here at angling uploaded please subscribe that's the best way to support us thanks guys